You see what's going on here? It's a, it's a courageous stand. I mean, yes. you know, maybe it's not Rosa Parks on the bus, but you know, this is pretty important. Oh, this is you amazing. Know, yeah. I don't want to get all preachy about this, but you go back. What did Jesus say? Yeah. I was thirsty and you gave me water. That's what Larry did here. And I'm just wondering, are Republicans like really going to push you getting this guy away. sent to jail? Oh, huh? Wow. The story gaining momentum too. Political yeah, figures, celebrities across the country reacting to Larry David's brave stand. Can you believe that? This Larry David they're talking about seems like quite a fellow. Well, he that is. Guy is. He's really something. We know better. Our cameo appearance in last night's new episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Earlier this month, we had Larry David and co-star Susie Essman on Morning Joe to preview the new and final season, which airs on HBO every Sunday night at 10 and then streams on Max. Now, before that, I got a chance to visit Larry's production offices in California. Take a look. Let's start with your corporate jet. <laughs> that is nice. That's very good. Is that, is that just when that, people come that's in just to so, them? That is so low. Joe, I, I don't even know where that came Did from, you okay? That to I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Let's move on, okay? okay? We'll move on. Uh, you've got Hitler books here. <laughs> yeah. you want, let's go from the corporate jets no, to the Maureen, Hitler books. Maureen Dowd sends me uh, Hitler books. Now, why does Maureen send you uh, she Hitler knows, books? She knows I like uh, movies about Nazi Germany. Germany. <laughs> Corporate just does in Germany. Can't end this. No. And that's me. Look how happy I am when I first started doing stand up. Did you ever think that your dream of being a comedian wasn't going to work? I didn't even start stand up until I was 27. Mm -hmm. So there was no dream of being a comedian. I was a, a hopeless case in my 20s. I didn't know what I was going to do. My parents sent me to a therapist. I remember once I was, when I was a private chauffeur, I saw a guy from college mm -hmm. walk by the car and he was wearing a, an immaculate three-piece suit and sees me in mm -hmm. this chauffeur's outfit and we locked eyes. We couldn't, he couldn't even bring himself to nod or do anything. He just turned his head and continued walking. Mm -hmm. And that's when, <laughs> that's when I knew that. <laughs> Something had to change. I started comedy in like 71 or something, and he was just hanging around. I didn't know at the time that he lived a block and a half away in, in a place that it, it defies d description. It yeah. was, anyway, but he was so funny, Larry, on stage. And he liked my work too. And we became best friends suddenly. I mean, we just. We did everything for each other. You guys, you guys were both pretty subversive comics. Yeah, yeah. And what changed? I decided to, you know, go into uh, to become a stand-up. And that didn't go well, though, either, did it? Um, there and were. I didn't bomb all the time. I'd say I bombed frequently. Uh, it was unpleasant. How did you get into the writing? How did you get into the SNL writing? Well, I was on this show. Mm -hmm. in the early 80s. From, they, they got me from my stand-up. It was a show like Saturday Night Live. It was mm -hmm. called Fridays. Oh, Fridays, yeah. Yeah, Fridays. so I was on that. And I think from there, um, that's how I got the writing job on SNL. And it's um, 1984. It's about six weeks into the show. The sketches that I'm writing are doing well at the read-through. The, the writers like them, the exactly. actors like them. Producer doesn't like them. They do a few in dress rehearsal, mm -hmm. and, and they, get, they all get cut before air. And then finally, in maybe around the seventh week, they cut another one. This is five minutes before the show, and the producer <laughs> the producer's sitting in his yeah. director's chair. Yeah. And I walk, can I curse here? Oh, yeah. And I went, this show stinks! It stinks! I hate it! I'm done! <laughs> F*** you! I quit! <laughs> I get home and Kramer, right. the real Kramer, the, real the guy Kramer. who the character in the show was based mm -hmm. on, he goes, what are you doing here? Because I'm, I'm supposed to be watching the show. I say, well, I, I, you know, I just, I just, I had a fit and I quit. And I go, so stupid. I just cost myself X amount of dollars and 
I could live on that money for two years, because let's face it, the stand-up wasn't going to support me. And he says, well, you should go back in on Monday morning and pretend it never happened. What should I do? Maybe you can just go back. You mean just walk into the staff meeting on Monday morning like it never happened? Sure. Yeah. I, I take my seat at the meeting. He's going around to each writer, asking them what they're thinking about and working on. He does one, two, three, four, and then he gets to me. And I go, well, you know, I'm thinking about a sketch. <laughs> and that was it. And it worked. And it worked. A stool. Yeah, for the elevator man. Come here. Come here. Oh, look. Oh, here, wait. If you take a job in a new building, would you want there to be a stool in the elevator? Well, I, I wouldn't want to sit if I was taking people up or down, but I guess if I was waiting in the lobby, it would be okay if there was a stool. And... How come, uh, no chair? What? <laughs> I, I couldn't help but notice that uh, you don't have a chair. Have they ever offered you a chair? No. <laughs> would you like a chair? I suppose if they gave me one, I'd sit down. Uh -huh. Let's talk about Seinfeld. Sure. Because people say it's a show about nothing, but it was actually inspired by shopping in a Korean grocery store. Is that right? After we performed Catch a Rising Star, we, mm -hmm. we were going to split a cab back to the west side. This mm -hmm. is, this is uh, Jerry and I. And um, we stopped off at a grocery store before we split a cab. And we're in the store, and we're talking the way we always talked about various products and things like that. And, and then, because NBC was interested in Jerry doing a show, we both go in, oh, this, this, is, this should be the show. This is the show. This will work. Yeah. Don't you know the difference between salsa and salsa? <laughs> you have the salsa after the salsa. <laughs> This should be the show. This is the show. What? Yes. Just talk. Yeah, right. And you, you've got, and I love this, you've got on your wall the initial reactions. They recommended a pass on the show because yeah. um, they didn't like the characters. They didn't like anything about it. So who's it? the NBC executive who actually deserves credit for... The for guy's that? name was Rick Ludwin. And, and he, and what did he see in he, it? I don't know. I really don't know, but he saw something. I don't know how these things work. Right. But that's how the show got on. I guess the same thing for Kerr. Who had the idea at HBO to go, let's do this mockumentary, and then again, had the foresight to say, this is going to work. Well, when Chris Albrecht watched the special, it wasn't even a pilot. There was no intent to do more than a, just a special. And this was like the idea of you returning to stand up. To st yeah, I hadn't yeah. done stand up in 10 years, so it yeah. was sort of like a, like a mock documentary of me going back to stand up. $276. Made yes. like, like five phone calls or something. Well, it's actually phone calls and it shows a number of movies right here. You What'd you watch? Oh, okay, fine. What are you doing? Give it to me. Get no, 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 no. HBO pays for the porn. Keep, please no. call someone about the porn. Please. I'll, I can make a call right now about the porn. HBO will cover the porn. I I'll don't care. For it. Okay, I don't that's care. It. Okay. So I invented some scenes, which became sort of um, what Curb, Curb became. And um, Chris Albrecht watched it and, and said, this should be, this, we should do this as a series. Is there a tough part of this? Because I know with Curb, I know you're going to talk about it's how great like, it is, it's like, but what's the tough part of it's this? Like, it's like three jobs, and it takes about 18 months. It's about six months per job. The first job is the writing. I do that with Jeff Schaefer. The show's written three times, basically, right? We do an outline, and then every scene is a live rewrite. Like, there's just people are talking, and you steer it, and whatever, but like... But that's where the show gets written in. There's lots of different options. And then we write it for the final time in the edit room. We have to actually make a choice about uh, on you know, which one you're going to do. Yeah. Which so the actors do. just, they, they do improv. They'll do maybe four or five different takes. These editors are brilliant. I mean, most editors, here's a line. They say, you know, there's two takes. They check it off. They're home before lunch. This, we are stitching and weaving. And if you can't see someone's yeah, face, we're I mean, looping. the editor has to sift through like five, seven takes. Right. And then pick out sort of the all-star team. And you look at him, he's, I mean. Yeah. I'm exhausted. He's the rim. I you mean, know, it, it's I, been I, an exhausting I usually, time. I usually have a dress code for him. Yeah. But he obviously didn't abide by Take it today. Look at the socks. Yeah. Look at his socks. Yeah. And we ordered this kind of for the table. And I feel like you've gone way over your appetizer allotment at this point. My you, allotment? Well, there's three of us. We each get a third. Who makes up that rule? It's, it's an, an unwritten, unwritten rule. rule. Oh, my God. 
There's two Larry Davids. Holy sh! I always loved the fact that he would always get famous actors who maybe aren't haven't acted in years. He would bring them back and give them their uh, uh, deserved moment of glory on a great Curb episode. I mean, when he had Shelley Berman. How's mom doing? Oh, well, you know how people do. So uh, we brought her back. You know, your mother, she got sicker, and we had to bring her back to the hospital. She's in the hospital? Yeah, well, not now. So uh, she's feeling better? No, well, in a way. Nobody goes on forever and ever and ever. She's dead? Uh, yeah. She's dead, dead, she's dead. Well, one, there was a funeral. Well, why wasn't I at the funeral? Why, why didn't you call me? You, she told me not to bother you, you know. She I, told you not to bother no, me? No. What is that, what's that supposed to mean? Get... This scene is really funny. It is. Shelley Berman is, is so amazing. brilliant in this scene. And, and it, he's looking around yeah. and he's all Well, nervous. your mother said, your mother said not to bother you. I'm not gonna no, live forever. So, so, mm. when you set this up, though, mm. It's not line by line by line. You just no, give we Shelly we, we or winged anybody it. else a couple of... This, yeah. We completely winged, this, winged it, yeah. Cheers. 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 Larry, you can't look me in the eye and toast? Look you in the eye? Yeah. The, towards what end? Because that's what people do. Get they look each here. other in the eye. What, what, what is this, a seance? We're raising people from the dead? Come on, give me a break. No, we're connecting and having some intimacy. I, I don't need to connect. We're all playing versions of ourselves. Susie's playing a heightened version of... Sort of her. amped up. Yeah, amped At up. At 11. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Garland, playing right. a, a version of himself. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, Cheryl, everybody else on the cast, mm -hmm. a version of themselves uh, tweaked a little bit. But JB is not playing him. He's not playing himself. He's not playing JB smooth. <laughs> He's playing a character. For a dollar a minute, five dollar minimum, I was sitting in that booth while you go and use the bathroom. You order, I gotta go? Yes, I gotta go. Okay, okay, thank you. Go before I gotta go. Get on out of here. Okay. Hey, excuse me, you just spat on my shoe. It's a spit shot. It's like, what, stop, stop. What? He's yeah. making this stuff up. Right. Okay, in a character. Yeah. That's, that's way harder than what I'm doing. And, I mean, he's so brilliant. Oh! Oh! What the f***? Oh! That's artificial fruit! What the f*** was the food on the table? I don't know. I saw the Jeff's house. I liked it. Don't put the f*** on the table. I don't f get this. One of the things I love about Curb is that the laughing is genuine. So when somebody says something funny and people are laughing, it's because it's funny.